and we call those cells present in the sign cells of the lymph node. Their function is to parasitose in the tissues. Macrophages. They are the ones occupying the spaces. Medullary sinuses, cortical sinuses, and then the subcapsular sinuses. Now, in the cortex, the link nodes are forming those structures. Some of call the point the outline structure. Aggregation of the lymphocytes to form ovoid to round structures. Lymphoid? Uh, those are called lymphoid nodules or lymphoid follicles. The central area of the follicles is called germinal center. What population of lymphocytes is occupying? What population of lymphocytes is occupying the germinal center? Uh, oh, oh, that should be... You should already know that because we have discussed it already in the lecture. And hold your responsibility in reading. The answer of the question. Let us go back to the capsule. What are the two types of lymphatic vessels entering and exiting? Afferent. Afferent and? Yeah. Which one enters? Afferent. Afferent. Where do the afferent vessels enter? The lymph nodes. No, not in the hilos. The afferent vessels enter the lymph nodes via the capsule. So those pointed spaces are actually the afferent lymphatic vessels delivering lymphatic fluid to the lymph node. That is why it is important for you to know the marginal sinuses because they will receive first the fluid coming from coming from the from the afferent lymphatic vessels. So in malignancy, kunyare, take for example a breast cancer metastasizing to the lymph node in the axillary area, the cancer cells will be seen first in the marginal sinuses of the invaded or the metastasized lymph nodes. Not only the cancer cells, but also if there are microorganisms present in the lymph fluid, they will enter, the microorganisms will be seen first in the marginal sinuses. So, and then they will go to the medulla. So, following the part of the cortical sinuses up to the medullary sinuses and then the job of the lymphocytes here is to analyze the antigen of the microorganism so that they will be able to mount a defense against the invading microorganism. Okay, so in the cortex, you will be able to see lymphoid follicles. In the medulla, you will be able to see spaces plus and the medullary cords. Sinuses, medullary sinuses, and the medullary cord. So cortex, lymphoid follicles. So from the capsule or from the afferent vessels, lymphatic fluid will enter the subcapsular sinus and then go to the medullary sinuses. And then from the medullary sinuses, the Medullary sinuses will aggregate with each other to eventually form the efferent lymphatic vessel. Where does, now how many efferent lymphatic vessels are present in a lymph node? There are multiple, there are multiple afferent lymphatic vessels entering the sinus. And we have about 40 efferent lymphatic vessels. There is only one, and then that vessel leaves the lymph node via what portion? The hilum. Unfortunately, there is no hilum shown in this lymph node. Hilum looks almost like that. An invagination of the capsule containing the infinite lymphatic vessel and the blood like vessels, arteries and veins of the lymph node. Okay? 
Okay, so before we take the histology of the lymph node, identify the point that's structured. The left core. Okay, now about that portion. Okay, how about that space? And then that point, that portion, you know, there we go. Next, lymphoid organ. Identify the structure outline. The detailed central area. Left lymphoid. Polycan or lymphoid nodule. Okay? That is right. The, 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 these organs are grouped into a system because they have a common characteristic. They are composed of lymphocytes. Okay? The lymphocytes are forming lymphoid nodules. Almost resembles, almost resemble the lymph nodes, minus the cortex and the medulla. Now you will be able to identify a lymphoid tissue as the tonsil because the tonsil is covered by that epithelium. Let us zoom in and identify the pointed epithelium. So what type of epithelium we show? What? Ah, malik pa rin yan sa practical exam. We have finished the epithelial tissues already. Non-keratinizing. Okay, so the tonsils are identified by the presence of the lymphoid follicles and then the covering famous epithelium. So in that portion, of the tonsil, the, the, the stratified squamous epithelium is eroded already. However, uh, in reality, the epithelium is not flat, the covering is not flat. It embodies it embodies towards the tissues of the tonsils. How do you call the embodinations? Tonsillar? Okay, tonsillar grips. So on one side, um, on one side of the tonsil, it will be covered by the stratified squamous epithelium. Have you seen your tonsils already? Yes. Okay, you will be able to visualize your tonsils by looking at the mirror and opening your mouth wide and saying, ah, and the one and the one tonsils. They, what you will be able to see will be that surface, which is covered by the stratified squamous epithelium. On the other side, opposite to what you will be able to see, okay, is that portion, so muscle in the pharynx, and then the tonsils are covered on the other side by a capsule. So what is the connective tissue composing the capsule? Dense. Dense. Irregular connective tissue. However, <coughs> mentioned a while ago, you will be able to identify a lymphoid tissue as the tonsil, as the tonsil, you will be able to say that, histology, lymphoid follicles which are covered by stratified squamous epithelium. This 
explained is covered by a dense irregular connective tissue also. However, that capsule is not anymore shown in this slide. So, the capsule of the spleen invaginates towards the inner portion of that organ, forming now that column of dense irregular connective tissue inside the kidney, inside the spleen. So this is the specific name of that dense irregular connective tissue. It will not anymore be called a capsule because it is already inside. Huh? What? The trabeculum. Pag may dami na trabeculate. Now, what are the two pulps of the screen? Okay, red pulp and white pulp. How will you be able to identify the red pulp from the white pulp? So imagine, imagine, visualize the screen as composed of red pulp. Okay? Now, it's called red pulp because it contains it contains blood. Okay? It contains blood. Blood is red. So the red pulp is composed of what type of blood vessels? No? No? Papillaries. What particularly what type of papillaries? Sinusoidal papillaries. Okay? Normally, or usually, capillaries are so small, they will only allow the passage of one line of red blood cell at a time only. However, sinusoidal capillaries are very large. Their cavities are very large. That is why we are able to see many red blood cells inside their lumen. So, thus, the name red pulp. Because that portion of the spleen contains numerous blood. Large volume of blood, which is contained inside the sinusoidal capillaries, or you may call the blood vessel sinusoids. Okay, so that's the low power objective view of the red pulp, and then that's the scanning objective view of the red pulp, the pointed area. Now, the white pulps are actually not colored white. They are called white pulps because they are composed of white blood cells. So, uh, take a look at that uh, outline portion. It resembles almost a lymphoid follicle, including that outline area. It resembles lymphoid follicle because they are composed of lymphocytes also. So let us zoom in to that pointed white pulp. It is called white pulp because it is composed of white blood cells, the lymphocytes. Sides in the white pulps, as you can notice there. So, uh, again, yeah, red pulp because of the presence of red blood cells, and then that area does not contain any more red blood cells. And yeah, then white pulp, composed of white blood cells. Okay? Each white pulp will have an associated blood vessel, artery or an arteriole. How do you call that blood vessel? The central artery. So, uh, Pag small, arteriole, pag malaki, just like that one, artery. So central artery, which is present in every white pulp. Although, the blood vessel is called central, it will not always have a central location, just like, just like the central arteriole. It is at the periphery of that white pulp. Okay? So for the screen, it is covered by a capsule. The capsule invaginates towards the inner portion of the spleen to form that pointed structure which is called okay, trabeculum and then identify the pointed area. Red pulp, it is composed of what type of blood vessel? Sinusoids. Okay, and 
you find the outline portion? How about that structure? Okay, for the histology of the thymus gland, what is the function of that organ? What is the function of the thymus gland? Is it the site of production of the lymphocytes? And differentiation. What do you mean by differentiation? Maturation. What does it mean when a lymphocyte becomes mature? Very good. Now, where are the lymphocytes, the lymphocytes, for that matter produced? The bone marrow. After leaving the bone marrow, the T lymphocytes are still not capable of performing any function. That is why they will have to stay for some time in the thymus gland to be able to come up with a function. So after leaving the thymus gland, a T lymphocyte can be classified as a helper T cell or a cytotoxic T cell, capable of performing a specific function already. Those cells are the lymphocytes. So let us zoom in to them. To their appearance. Okay? That's that's like the appearance of the lymphocytes elsewhere in the body. In the lymph nodes, in the tonsils, same morphology will be seen for the lymphocytes in the thymus gland. Now, what are the things that you should be able to remember in order to identify the thymus gland? The lymphocytes in the thymus are grouped into lobules. Okay? So that is one lobule of lymphocytes. Okay? So that is another lobule of lymphocyte. Another lobule of lymphocyte. So remember that the lobules are incompletely separated from each other. The structure separating the lobules from each other, that pointed structure is called? And the In the spleen, it is called the trabeculum. In the thymus, it is called a septum. A septum. Magmadami na septic. Now, okay, that lobule, okay, as you can notice, has a darker outer portion and a lighter middle portion. So goes with that the beauty. Lighter inner portion, darker outer portion. How do you call the middle portion of the lobule? Ano? Midala. Okay. So, kanina, sa lymph node, malaking lymph node, the outer portion is cortex, the middle portion is medala. In the, in the thymus gland, you will be able to see multiple lobules which contain central medala and outer cortex. The cortex is composed of what cells? Lymphocytes. C lymphocytes. The medala, in the medulla present are the cells which will impart a particular function to the lymphocytes. So th these cells in the medulla are called the epithelial cells. Okay. We are looking now at the medulla, lighter portion of the lobule of the thymus. Some of the epithelial cells will be forming whirl-like structures. How do you call that whirl-like structure? In the middle. Very good. Axons, corpusols, or antecedental basal corpusol, or the tiny corpusol. So they are they are located in the middle. So middle, tiny or axons, corpusol, and then the pointed area is called. The cortex, some of the structures that goes there. Okay, and the histology of the thymus gland. Now, 
next organ is the ileum. Okay? If we will be able to identify the histology of this small intestine because of the presence of those tongue-like structures. Those tongue-like structures are not present in the large intestine. They are called? Villi. What is the function of the villi? Increase so surface area for absorption. Now, remember the cortex of the lymph node and the histology of the tonsils. Okay, same lymphoid nodule will also be seen in this portion of this one in this thing. Identify the part point that is. Um, germinal center. Germinal center. Okay. It will still be composed of lymphocytes, just like the other lymphoid organs that we have discussed. What is the specific name of this lymphoid polygon? Being present in the ileum. Okay. Bayer's patch. Beeline with an underlying pair sponges. Last new point organ, the appendix. So the appendix is a portion of the large intestine. That is why we are not able to see beeline anymore. The line of beeline, the surface is flat. Well, the glands are still present underneath the glands are okay, lymphoid nodules or lymphoid follicles okay, and they include chagitosan of the group mental even though it is an organ of the GIT the gastrointestinal system because it contains numerous lymphoid Follicles, it is included in the study of the lymphoid organs. What is the function of the appendix? The most common source of income for the sorter. The most common cause of abdominal surgery is appendicitis. Do you have any question? Now, you may not bother your mic. 